Well, hello, Pythonistas and friends on YouTube wanting to learn about Python and web scraping. Welcome to another Python web scraping tutorial number 15 in this series. And I hope you have enjoyed the last video regarding the intro to Scrapy. So in this uh, video, we are going to start about start to talk about how APIs work. I know I have talked about this API stuff in uh, other video series like the uh, my, uh, mining data from social media uh, video tutorial series. But again, r repetition is the mother of all skills, as Tony Robinson Robbins says. So repeating it, I think it's also a very good learning experience for everyone. To we need to uh, repeat. Uh, check the documentation and read it again. It's impossible to remember everything. So let's dive in to talk about using APIs. So like many programmers who have worked on large projects, we have we may have sh uh, our share of horror stories when it comes to working with other people's code. From namespace issues to type issues to misunderstandings of function output, simply trying to get information from point A to method B, that can be a nightmare. So this is where application programming interfaces, that's uh, APIs is short for pro application programming interfaces, and this is where it comes handy. APIs provide nice convenient interfaces between multiple disparate applications. It doesn't matter if the applications are written by different programmers with different architectures or even in different languages. APIs are designed to serve as a lingua franca, means a common uh, language between different pieces of software that need to share information with each other. Although various APIs exist for a variety of different software applications, applications. In recent times, API has been commonly understood as meaning web application API. Typically, a programmer will make a request to an API via HTTP for some type of data, and the API will return this data in the form of XML or JSON. Although most APIs still support XML, JSON is quickly becoming the encoding protocol of choice. Uh, if taking advantage of a ready-to-use program to get information pre-packaged in a useful format seems like a bit of a departure from the rest of this uh, tutorial. Well, it is and it isn't. Although using APIs isn't generally considered a web scraping by considered web scraping by most people, both practices use many of the same techniques, like sending HTTP requests and produce similar results uh, getting information back so they can be very complementary to each other so it's important to learn about both um, paradigms for instance if you might want to combine information gleaned from a web scraper with information from a published api in order to make the information more useful to you so in an example later in this tutorial we'll look at uh, combining Wikipedia edit histories, which uh, contain IP addresses with an IP address resol resolver API in order to get the ge geographic location of Wikipedia edits around the world. So we'll be having some fun a little bit later. So in the following API uh, video tutorials, we'll, uh, we're going to offer a general over overview of APIs and how they work look at few popular APIs available today and look at how you might use an API in your own web scraper. So let's talk a little about how APIs work. Although APIs are not nearly as ubiquitous as they should be, a large motivation for writing or doing this tutorial, because if you can't find an API, you can still get the data through scraping. And you can find APIs for many types of information. If you're interested in music, there are a few different APIs that you can give you, song, give you songs, artists, albums, and even information about musical styles and related artists. Uh, do you need sports data? 
ESPN provides APIs for athlete information, game scores, and more. Google has dozens of APIs in its developer section for, for example, language translation, analytics, geolocation, and more. You should definitely check out uh, the link to Google, which is https slash slash console dot developers dot google dot com. I have a bunch of APIs that are fun to work with. I have used some of the Google, I have used Google API and YouTube API in my other video tutorial series on mining data from social media uh, video tutorials. So please do check those out as well. So APIs are, let me get back here. <clears throat> APIs are extremely easy to use. In fact, you can try out simple API requests just by entering the following in your browser. If you take this, excuse me, let me get to my browser. We can use the free GUIP API. And we want it in JSON format and we put in the IP address. And we get the following response. This is nicely formatted. So, so you may be thinking, so wait, you can, you navigate to a web address in your browser window and it produces some information and uh, albeit very well formatted. What's the difference between an API and a, and a regular website? Despite the hype around APIs, the answer is often not much. APIs function via HTTP, the same protocol used to fetch data for websites, download a file, and do almost anything else around the internet. The only thing that makes an API an API is the extremely reg regulated syntax it uses. And the fact that APIs represent their data as JSON or XML rather than HTML. So that was a, a quick example of how you can use an API and the free geoip.net. This API resolves uh, IP addresses to geographic locations and is one we'll be using later in this uh, tutorial series as well. You can learn more about it at http at freegeoip.net. So I recommend definitely check that out. So getting back to our tutorial. So common conventions uh, when using APIs, uh, unlike the subjects of most web scraping, uh, APIs follow an extremely standardized set of rules to produce information. And they produce that information in an extremely standardized way as well. Because of this, it is easy to learn a few simple ground rules that will help you to quick, quickly get up and running with any given API, as long as it's fairly well written. That being said, keep in mind that some APIs do deviate slightly from these rules. So it's important to read an API's documentation the first time you use it regardless of how familiar you are with APIs in general. So what we are going to talk about now are some general stuff. Let's talk about methods. Uh, there are four ways to request information from a web server via HTTP, which is get, post, put, delete. Get is what you use when you visit a website through the address bar in your browser. Get is the method you are using when you call uh, make a call to http uh, colon forward slash forward slash free geoip dot net slash json slash and the ip address so that's what we did here so you can think of us get as saying hey web server please get me this information and post is what you use when you fill out a form or submit information, presumably to a backend script 
on the server. Every time you log into a website, you are making a post request with your username and hopefully encrypted password. If you are making a post request with an API, you are saying please store this information in your database. Put is less commonly used when interacting with websites, but uh, it's used from time to time in APIs. A put request is used to update an object or information. An API might require a post request to create a new user, for example, but it might need a put request if you want to update a user's email address. In reality, many APIs use post requests in lieu of put requests when updating information. Whether a new entity is created or an old one is merely updated is often left to how the API request itself is structured. However, it's still good to know the difference and you will often encounter put requests in commonly used APIs. And delete is straightforward. It is used to delete an object. For instance, if I send a delete request to, for example, HTTP and myapi.com slash user slash 23, for example, this is just made up stuff. It will delete the user with the ID 23. Delete methods are not often encountered in public APIs, which are primarily created to dissem uh, disseminate information rather than allow random users to remove that information from their databases. However, like the put method, it's a good one to know about. Although a handful of other HTTP methods are defined under the specification for HTTP, these four uh, constitute the entire entirety of what is used in just about any API you will ever encounter. So I hope uh, you find this very useful as an introduction to how APIs work and we'll go more into details about authentication um, uh, and the, in the upcoming videos, we'll go more uh, over about uh, more over authentication responses, API calls, and more in the upcoming videos. I hope you will stick around to watch those videos as well. So this is it for this uh, short uh, video on APIs, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share the video, comment uh, if you like, and I hope to see you in the next video. Okay, bye guys.